Welcome Wildcats to a brand new school year. My name is Mr. Atkins. I'm going to be your Algebra 2 teacher this year. Uh, there's a few things that uh, I'd like to cover during this introductory video. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the course syllabus which you can find linked in Schoology which you should have already been added to my Schoology class this year. That's something that they did for the teachers so that we didn't have to give everybody separate codes and get you guys all situated into the class. So if you log into Schoology at elearning.tisd.org, you should be able to find my Algebra 2 class. Uh, one of the first things that you'll see there is the syllabus for the class. And if you open it up, it's going to look like this. Uh, the very top section is just my name along with my room number. Uh, especially important for those of you who might be coming from remote learning later in the year and joining us on campus. That classroom phone number in the top right hand corner is the easiest way to get a hold of me if you can't send me an email, but email is by far the best contact, which is just my full name, robert.atkins at tisd.org. Uh, all of you who are going to be starting as remote learners, please note that every Tuesday between 920 and 940 is our remote face-to-face -face time in the math department. That means from 9.20 to 9.40 every week on Tuesday, you have to be logged in to the Google, sorry, not Google, Microsoft Teams online classroom. Usually it will be a, a short little assignment that we put together to assist you. However, you are required to be there. That is part of the state requirements for all remote learners. So with those brief uh, introductory things out of the way, let's talk about the class itself, what Algebra 2 is. You can see the course description here listed at the top of the first page. Effectively, what Algebra 2 is, is it is an introduction that creates the foundational elements of Algebra for the higher levels. So your Algebra 1 class back as a freshman or sophomore was designed to get you an introduction into how functions and equations work, whereas Algebra 2's purpose is to take those foundations and extend them into different types of functions that you may or may not have seen before. Uh, so you can see that the first six weeks we're going to be covering two units, and that is true for most six-week periods with the exception of the second six weeks. We're covering all of unit three and some of unit four. And the entirety of the third six week period will be covering unit four. Now the reason for this is because unit four contains a lot of new material that you guys have not seen before and is very important for the following uh, three six week periods. So for the second half of the year. We spend a lot of time on it and it is a very long unit, but we break it down into manageable pieces. Uh, other than that, every six week period has two units in it, so we have a total of 11 units that we're going to be covering. Let's talk about a couple of supplies that are going to be useful for the class. This is most specifically within the classroom, however it will help your organization if you are a remote learner as well. So. If you have a one and a half inch three ring binder with regular line notebook paper and graph paper, that will make taking notes for this class much, much easier. You'll be able to organize them and you'll be able to put graphs and notes in the same area and you'll be able to put different pages where they need to go much easier. Uh, many of my students in the past have chosen to completely ignore the notebook paper and gone with just graph paper. So they'll take regular notes with gridded graph paper uh, instead of lined notebook paper. This has worked for them and it may work for you. Uh, obviously you will need something to write with. I strongly recommend not using ink. It is a math class and I'm sure all of your math teachers in the past have told you, don't use a pen! I'm going to give you the same recommendation. However, you're going to notice that when I'm writing on paper, I'm usually using a pen. 
The reason I use a pen, especially on the overhead document camera, is because it's much easier to see than pencil. So I do that not because I'm not taking the advice I'm giving you guys, but because it makes it much easier for you to see what I'm doing. I also highly recommend colored pencils, or if you are insisting on using pen, colored pens. It is very, very important to be able to see how things change in Algebra 2. We're going to be doing a lot of what's called transforming of graphs, and having multiple colors to mark those changes is very important. Finally, we will be using TI Inspires in the classroom, however I'm not allowed to check those out. So I strongly recommend learning the online graphing calculators that we have available to us. You will have one both in the HMH online textbook that we will be using, as well as I will be covering in depth uses of the Desmos online calculator, which can be found as stated here at desmos.com. Finally, there is a Chrome plugin version of a graphing calculator made available to us by Texas Instruments. However, it is the TI-84, not the TI-Inspire. And while the 84 is actually my preferred calculator over the Inspire, it's not the one that you are personally used to. So the reason I recommend Desmos is because it is a bit more user-friendly than the TI-84 that you have access to on your Chromebook. As far as textbooks go, the only textbook that we are going to be using in this class is the Houghton or Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Algebra 2 textbook. Basically, if you go into Clever, you'll see an HMH link. It will take you directly to the online textbook for this class. If you prefer to save it as a uh, bookmark yourself. The website is my.hrw.com. Uh, please note this bolded portion here. The username is your gcloud email address. You have used this website in middle school if you were at Temple ISD. Because of that, your Chromebook probably already has your uh, middle school username and password saved. You will have to delete that username and password and save the proper one. In high school, we just use your regular G Cloud email address, so your six digit student ID number at gcloud.tisd.org, and then the password is the regular password you use to log into Chrome, your Chromebook. If you have any issues, please let me know right away so that we can get it reset and set up properly. As far as in-class materials go, this is more for in-class students than uh, online remote learners. You have to bring your Chromebook to class every day. 90 to 95 percent of the work that we will be doing is done on a Chromebook. That means your Chromebook needs to be in class and it needs to be charged. Now I recognize that this is true for the vast majority of classes that you are taking on campus. As such, throughout the room, I will have the ability for you to plug in your Chromebooks. However, I do not have enough chargers for everyone. I also don't have enough ports for everyone. I will provide locations that you can plug in, but you need to bring your own chargers. Uh, please note, while we will be watching a lot of videos such as this one, you cannot be watching non-approved videos. We had significant issues last year with Netflix and when it released Disney Plus. So please make sure you are following the school's terms of service when it comes to what you're doing on your Chromebook. Grading in Algebra 2 is very simple. 30% of your grade will be based on unit tests. Every unit will have a test at the end of it. 30% of your grade comes from those tests. So for the units where we have uh, or sorry, for the uh, six week periods where we have two units, each test is worth 15% of your grade. Regular daily assignments make up 60% of your grade. And we also have some playlists structured throughout the year. Uh, we're calling those journal entries effectively, the extra stuff on the playlist. That's going to be 10% of your grade. 
uh, I have given an actual list out of what daily assignments are. Uh, the Algebra 2 team was required to put together a idea for what late assignments would look like for us. So this is true for all Algebra 2 teachers on campus. If you do not turn in the assignment on the day that it is due or before the day it's due, you are still allowed to turn it in. However, the highest grade that I can give you is a 70%. You cannot turn in an assignment after the day that we take the unit test. So once we've taken the unit one test, we can no longer turn in assignments for unit one. Uh, the last thing to know is that I can allow you to redo or retake tests. So if you want to redo an assignment, I am allowed to let you do that. If you would like to retake a test if your grade's below a 70, I can allow you to do that too. But please note that this is only true if your grade was below a 70 for the original and the makeup test grade gets averaged with the original. So if on the original you just guessed on every problem and missed them all and you got a zero and the second time you take it you actually work hard and you get a hundred, the average of those is a 50. So still not a passing grade. That means even though you are allowed to redo or retest, Please do your best the first time so that you can, if you do have to retake it, you're not starting from zero. Uh, as you guys probably know, you are able to get an exemption for the final exam of each semester. I'm not going to go through all of the requirements to do so. Your student handbook between pages 23 and 25 has those. Uh, one more quick thing on the redo slash retest. Please note that this does not apply to my advanced Algebra 2 students. Uh, your syllabus does not actually have this section in it. It says that you cannot redo or retest. As far as academic integrity goes, you guys have heard the terms plagiarism. You've heard a lot of other things. If you plagiarize your work or if you are seen copying another student's work or you are cheating in any other way, you will get a failing grade on the assignment. I will give you a zero. I will not debate about it. I have given you this warning well in advance. Please do not cheat. It's really that simple. Uh, electronic devices in my classroom. You will have your Chromebook every day. We already talked about that, but other than that, the school has mandated that we do not have any other electronic devices in the class. Yes, that includes your cell phone, that includes your iPod, that includes literally every other electronic device which the school has defined for us. If it has an on-off switch, it is an electronic device and we cannot have it in the classroom. The way I have solved this in my class is when you come into my class, there is a board in the back of the room where you can put your uh, phone in a slot. You are allowed to charge your phone while it is there. So if you bring your charger and you hang your phone up in the back, you are more than welcome to plug it in back there. Just remember, I don't have chargers, so you will need to bring your own if you want to do that. Uh, classroom expectations are very straightforward. I expect you to do your own work. I expect you to put in an effort for your own education. Uh, as far as number two goes, respecting yourself and others by staying on task, it's really straightforward. If you are completely off task, it's pretty clear that you are not currently respecting the class time of others. Uh, number three, I just ask that you come to class prepared. I've talked about what materials you need above please take a look at those. And the last one, this is especially true for remote learners. Please check Skyward and Schoology regularly. Every single day there is a daily assignment put into Schoology that is what I am required to use to take attendance for you. If you do not do this assignment, you will be marked as absent for that day 
and too many absences according to the TEA means you do not get credit for the class so please check Schoology every single day and do those assignments uh, I really want to make a point on this one passes in the past I've always allowed one student out at a time to use the restroom or grab a drink of water however due to the school's current COVID safety measures I am not allowed to let you leave the classroom period admin has said no students leave the classroom at all uh, the, they of course did leave an exception for people with medical passes issued by the school nurse uh, behavior management plan this is not something that I had an issue with last year all of my students were absolutely respectful during class and we did not have any issues however the school has changed the procedure this year so if we do have an issue uh, the first offense is a simple warning you and I have a conversation we figure out what's going on why your behavior is what it is and what we can do to change it if it's something that I am doing that is offensive, that is why you are acting up or acting out, however you would like to word it, then that's a conversation that you and I can have and I'll do my best to not act that way myself. If, however, the uh, behavior continues and escalates to a second offense, I am required at that time to contact your parents or parent and talk to them about modifying the behavior agreement that you and I made after the first offense. The third offense is an immediate referral to whoever your AP happens to be. Again, this was not an issue that I had last year, so I'm not expecting it to be an issue this year since I'm teaching the same courses. Uh, the tardy policy has been updated this year as well. Uh, it is very similar to last year's however they have slightly changed a couple of definitional things so in my class it's very simple if you're not in the door when the bell rings you're late if you're late I have to send you to mr. Hernandez's office to get a tardy pass I'm not allowed to let you in without that tardy pass uh, I mentioned above the schedule expectations for remote learners uh, for the most part you are asynchronous that means there are no specific times you have to log on as long as you log on and do your work every day so there is one assignment that uh, opens at midnight and it closes at midnight that's your daily assignment if that's not done you're absent other than that you are able to do your assignments as you please as long as they're getting done before the day that they're due that said every Monday from this says Monday it says Tuesday above I'll have to double check that uh, from 920 to 940 you must be logged on to that Microsoft Teams meeting uh, furthermore you are allowed to choose to log in between 920 and 10 o'clock by appointment I will have a calendar set up you email me a request and I get you added to the calendar currently I'm planning on having those uh, be 10 minute slots so you will uh, basically email me and say uh, between 930 and 940 I would like to have some tutoring I'll send you a link you'll join the link and at 940 I'll go to my next student who needs assistance uh, you're going to find that I will respond to all of your emails within 48 hours if you send me something and you have not heard from me by then please send me another email something has happened and I've missed it we do as teachers get a lot of emails uh, this is the general that I'm required to put in here so for math it is indeed on Monday uh, however this time is the entirety of the period you don't have to be there the whole time. The time that I have specifically chosen for us is 9.20 to 9.40. Uh, again, Thursday is your virtual tutorials. If you schedule with me another time, that's fine, but these are the ones that I always have set aside for you. If you have a reason, a technical reason, that you were not able to log on during that 20-minute period of time, let me know immediately send me that 
email to let me know so that I can clear it with the school. Uh, this attendance is exactly what I was talking about. We will have one assignment every uh, day that uh, opens at midnight, closes at midnight. That will be how I take attendance for all remote learners. Oh, and finally, uh, you do have other assignments aside from just that one daily assignment. You need to complete those daily, well not daily, you need to complete all of those assignments. Uh, we called them daily assignments up above, but we, you will not have an assignment every day. Uh, we will have some discussion boards. It lists all the different things that we put together there. Uh, this says 24 hours. I'm changing that. I listed above that it was actually 48 hours. Uh, the reason that that has changed uh, between last year and this year is because of the number of different students that we will be having uh, online contact with. Uh, last year, you know, everybody was in class, so the expectation was that the few emails we get, we would respond to within 24 hours. This year, however, with the number of remote learners that we have, it may take us a little bit of additional time to get through those emails, so they bumped it to 48 hours. I will probably get back to you well before that, though. So, I look forward to working with you guys throughout the school year. Again, my name is Mr. Atkins, and I'm happy to help you as we go through Algebra 2 and explore some of these new functions that you may never have seen.